Welcome! Today we're going to talk about this lovely 2021 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus that we have for sale. We recently took this one in on trade. In fact, it came in on trade for a Tesla Model 3 Long Range all-wheel drive for 2022. So obviously they like the Model 3, they're just upgrading to a little bit of a longer range one and one with all-wheel drive and a few extra odds and ends. Uh, if you don't need all-wheel drive and if you don't need a long range, this is a great uh, pre-owned battery electric vehicle to consider. In 2021, we see all, we saw a lot of changes uh, come to the Model 3, which I'll go over. So, so 21 is an awesome year for the Model 3. Uh, the standard range plus has a fully charged range of about 260 uh, miles, give or take. Uh, but mileage can be a little bit deceiving with EVs and Teslas. Uh, sometimes the EVs and Teslas tend to be a little bit more optimistic as far as uh, range goes. So for daily use, uh, Tesla recommends that we charge to 80%. We charge them a little bit higher than 80% at the dealership because a lot of times we have Teslas just sitting in the lot. They can't go on a charge every night. So we charge them up because the batteries, you know, start to drain and stuff like that. Uh, you know, Teslas do use energy just while they're parked. Uh, they have advanced thermal management systems for the batteries to keep them at a happy temperature, which makes them more efficient when you drive them. So uh, if, it's a, if, a, if the car is just sitting there and it's hot or cold out, a little bit of energy will be used to just kind of keep the temperatures at a happy, uh, the battery at a happy temperature. Uh, also, we have a, a, a sentry, sentry mode, which is a self-deterrent device. Um, that will also use energy because it has a, cameras all around it. So basically it's a, a security monitoring system, so it will record any movement around the car. When you back, get back to the vehicle, it'll say, hey, uh, there's a few sentry events and you can, you know, play back the what it saw most of the time is just people walking past your car, or someone on the cell phone near your car, which records everything, which is good because if someone does vandalize it or break into it, you'll have it on camera. Likewise, it also helps uh, while you're driving because it doesn't just work as a security system, it works as a 360 dash cam while you're driving, in fact, we had an employee who was just rear-ended in his Tesla, and that uh, dash cam came in very handy, uh, very easily uh, proving to the police who is at fault. Uh, you know, in this uh, in that incident, here's a video of it. Uh, so yeah, so going back to charging, so uh, this has uh, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, uh, later on, they did add uh, LFP batteries to the uh, Model 3 rear-wheel drive, which is a different battery chemistry. Those actually like to be charged to 100%, but there are some trade-offs. Uh, lithium ion batteries are a little bit more energy dense. They're a little bit more uh, of a premium battery. So uh, they generally weigh less because they can hold more energy for their size versus the cheaper LFPs. And um, you get a little bit better performance with the lithium ion batteries. Batteries are kind of like engines in the car. You can have the performance engine or you can kind of have the economy engine. The engine. So the LFPs are kind of like the economy batteries. Uh, you know, zero to 60 is closer to the six second range uh, with those. Uh, this one has a zero to 60 closer to the five second range. But the one uh, perk about the LFP batteries is that they do like to be charged to 100% uh, for daily use. For our lithium ion batteries, they like to be charged to 80%. It's perfectly fine to charge to 100% every once in a while uh, for a road trip, but for daily use, uh, just for the long, help, happy, healthiness of your batteries, your lithium ion batteries, for daily use, charge to 80%. But we can see a little over 80%, we have about 212 usable, miles of usable range. And that's the thing to think about. Uh, obviously, if you're a traveling salesperson, you have a 100 plus mile commute. Uh, there are exceptions, maybe, you know, if you live in an apartment and you can't charge your vehicle every night, that can, uh, you know, be a little bit of a roadblock to getting an EV. But most people, I think like, uh, you know, only 2% of uh, daily trips uh, for the US populations is over 100 miles. Most people, I think 80% of daily trips are less than 40 miles. So, you know, if you have a fully charged range of about 200 miles, give or take, uh, every morning when you wake up and get in your car because you charge it overnight, you know, at your house, uh, you know, there'll be situations very far and few between where you're going to have issues worrying about range. Um, and if you do uh, have issues with range, Tesla has another ace in the hole. They have an amazing supercharging network. Uh, they have, uh, you know, this proprietary supercharging network. You can see there's fast chargers all over the place. There's like three within seven miles of us. Um, so you can get a full charge in about, well, charge 80% in about 20 minutes. Um, so it's very fast and you don't have to wait the whole time. I, I went into a charging station with about 20 miles of range and just after five minutes it charged to 100 miles that quickly. So, uh, you know, you don't have to wait, charge to 80% to make it to your destination. You can just add enough range to, to finish your trip. So, uh, then Tesla has this amazing trip planner. 
uh, for instance, if I want to drive across the country to uh, my hometown of uh, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, I can put it in the uh, trip planner <laughs> and it'll figure out the whole trip for me. So if you have, if you're worried about my, you know, range anxiety, uh, the trip planner is perfect because it will always make sure you have enough range to make it to where you're going. And if you don't, it'll tell you where to charge for, how long to charge for to get to your destination. So you can pretty much drive anywhere in the country um, and uh, be able to, you know, take your Tesla of the amazing supercharging network. Um, and obviously, yeah, it also can figure out uh, round trips too. If you wanted to see if you have enough range to make a round trip to your destination and back without supercharging, uh, the trip planner can also tell you if you have enough range to do that. So pretty awesome stuff. Okay, so let's talk about some of the changes here uh, that we saw rolled out on the Model 3 over the last couple of years. Okay, so one of the biggest changes that you'll notice when you get into a 21 Model 3 is the redesigned center console, a little bit nicer design than the previous ones. You have this nice wireless charging pad right here, uh, nice uh, access and compartments and stuff, plenty of storage. So that's probably one of the biggest changes that we've seen uh, so far in the 21 Model 3, but we have more. Another change that we saw for uh, the 2021 model year on the Model 3 is the addition of the Tesla glass. So they have this new uh, double pane glass. You can see there's actually a sound deadening material sandwiched in between, which makes it a lot quieter. We first saw this roll out in the 2021 Model 3. And there's a difference. If you drive an older Model 3 versus this one, it's noticeably quieter, quieter with that uh, Tesla double pane glass. Another uh, thing we saw for 2021 is the addition of black. Uh, accents uh, earlier model threes uh, they had chrome accents on the around the window trim the door handles uh, around the headlight uh, the, the side mirror surroundings uh, this was all uh, like a bright chrome material but they switched to a black material so that's kind of like the you know the theme you know uh, styles with cars come and go for a while you know bright chrome was popular now the kind of the darker tinted chrome or the blackout uh, trim is uh, popular these days so this is kind of following uh, the design themes and stuff like that. You have a lot of space. The Model 3 is a compact. I'm six foot two. I have that front seat adjuster for my head. I have plenty of headroom, legroom back here. That's why uh, people love to use these as Ubers and, and taxi cabs and stuff like that. A lot of space for a small vehicle. Uh, since you're not hampered by the construction of a gas car with you know a drive shaft, an engine, a transmission, uh, you have a clean sheet design with a electric vehicle. Uh, so it just allows for more interior and cargo space versus a comparable size uh, gas car. Lots of storage in the trunk. Uh, these are real wheel covers that you can put on. We have a little bit extra storage under here. Uh, another change for uh, 2021 is the addition of a power rear uh, lift gate or a power trunk. Uh, you can actually get them retrofitted at $800 now if you have an older Tesla. Uh, but obviously you're not going to have to pay extra for that because it already has it. Uh, so that was another change we saw for 2021. Uh, so these are kind of like the alloy wheels. You can get uh, center caps too from Tesla uh, if you like the look of the center caps. Or you can put wheel covers. The wheel covers make it slightly more efficient. I think you maybe might ha add a five miles of range <laughs> or so uh, with the wheel covers on just for the approved aerodynamics. Uh, and one of the last things that we saw for 2021 there's a little bit desi a different design for the headlights. We have these new projector headlights, uh, which also was a change for 2021. We have a front here for extra cargo space. Model 3 is very safe. One of the safest vehicles I've ever tested by the NHTSA. One awesome vehicle. Well, thanks so much for taking the time today to watch this video. Hopefully we see you soon and have a wonderful day.